Hello everybody and welcome to another video and in this video we're going to go over how to muster an army for the new 10th edition Warhammer 40k. So yes, mustering your army in the new edition of 40k. So you've got three steps. First, you select the battle size. So incursion is a thousand points duration up to two hours strike force is two thousand point two thousand points duration up to three hours and onslaught is three thousand points duration up to four hours i like the fact that they've brought three thousand point battles back into this, the game the details of your army must be recorded on your army roster this can be written on a piece of paper or recorded you using the new warmer 40k app which to the date of recording this video, they have said absolutely nothing about. Uh, which you can be downloaded, uh, an army roster at warhammer.community.com. Then you select your army faction. Note on your army faction roster um, to be your army faction. Cool. Then we have um, four select your detachment rules. Note on your army roster one set of detachment rules for your army. Some detachment rules list units that you must either that you you either must include or cannot include in your army. That is interesting. You must follow these uh, all such rules when building your army. I hope we get an example of this. Then you select your units. Select all your units that you want to include in your army. Your army must include at least one character. And each time you include a unit in your army, it, it can take uh, any upgrades, enhancements, or options it has access to. Note, on your army roster, the number of models in the unit, any weapons, war gear, upgrades, or any enhancements it has, and its points values, subtract those points values from the total permitted for your battle size. Okay. So, we looks like we're still going to be paying points for upgrades. You can only include a unit in your army if the unit has the faction keyword you, uh, you choose for your army in step three. You have enough points remaining. Uh, your army does not already contain three units with the same data sheet name as the unit or six with the same data sheet name as the unit if, is, if, if it is a battle line or a dedicated transport. Only characters can be given enhancements and your army cannot include more than three enhancements in total. That's really cool. Not, uh, no unit can have more than one enhancement and each enhancement included in your army must be unique. Each epic hero cannot be given any enhancements. Your army cannot include the same epic hero more than once. Every dedicated transport unit from your army must start the battle with at least one unit embarked within it. Or it cannot be deployed for that battle and will instead be counted as having been destroyed during the first battle round. Wow. And then number six, select your warlord, which is one of your characters. Wow, that is really, really interesting. That The fact that if you get tactics, um, battle tactics, your dedicated transport, that you've got to have a unit in deployment. That's interesting. I wonder how that works for things like, well, drop pods would, you'd have a unit in drop pod in strategic reserve. Because they take strike. So that would be kind of interesting. That's pretty cool. So, missions. So, the missions are sort of broken down into 11 steps. So, you muster your army, as we've just done. We read the mission objectives. So, each mission will state its primary objectives are, and may also include one or more special rules. These uh, cover unique situations and abilities that can be used in the battle. Create the battlefield. So, you set up your battle, your, your tabletop. Uh, determine the attacker and defender. Players roll off and the winner is the attacker. Their opponent is the defender. Declare battle formations. In the order stated below, both players now secretly note down which of their leader units will start the battle attached. Must specify which leader unit is attached to which bodyguard unit. Which of their units will start the battle embarked within the transport models. They must specify uh, which units are embarked within which models. So that normally when you see players put like a marine on top of a rhino, that denounce that unit is in that transport. Which of these units will start in the strategic reserve? 
when both players have done so, they declare their selection to their opponent. So that's basically giving your opponent the rundown of what your army is and what it is doing. Each mission includes a deployment map that shows where each player can set up and the models in their army called the deployment zone and will list any restrictions that apply to setting up. We do have a mission in this free core rules and we will have a look at it after we've gone through these. Determine the first turn. Each mission will tell you how to determine which player has the first turn. Resolve the pre-battle rules. Players alternately resolve any pre-battle rules units from their armies have, starting with the player who took the first turn, and then you begin the battle. The first battle round begins. The players continue to complete the battle rounds until the battle ends, and then you end the battle. No, nothing about strategic reserves. Oh, sorry, not strategic reserves. Seizing the initiative. So we're going to have a little look down now at the um, the mission itself. So the, the mission that you get in the core rulebook is only war. So one, you muster your army as we did in page 55 and 56. Uh, mission objectives, so it's capture and control. Start from the second battle round at the end of each player's com uh, command phase. The player whose turn it is scores one victory point. For each objective marker they control, nice to a maximum of three VP per turn. Details how to control objective are on page 58. Basically, you've got to be within three inches of an objective to hold it. Players now create the battlefield and set up terrain, which is cool. Um, they're the battle sizes. So if a strike force incursion, you've got a 44 to 60. And it's on an onslaught, which is a 3000 point game. You've got a 44 inch times 90 inch board. So it's slightly bigger. Players are small must then alternatively setting up any objectives marks on the battlefield and objective markers cannot be placed within six inches of any battlefield edge or within nine inches of another objective marker determine who goes first and second declare your formations and then deploy your armies so deployment is pretty much set up you're going to be setting up inside your deployment zone roll off for the first turn and then re resolve any pre stuff just like we went through that list earlier and that's your deployment map. So that is it. That is essentially the new missions for 40k, which looks kind of good. So yeah, pretty simple. I was hoping that they would give an example of the detachment rules, but they haven't, um, which is a little bit of a shame. I was really hoping that the rule book would actually have that, but really, really interested. I'm going to be doing more videos on... Um, on the new edition i'm going to be doing my top five stratagems and my top five favorite changes to this edition so i'll see you all in the next video remember to like subscribe and ring that bell bye bye